if you have your Bibles, turn, turn with me, and I think what I want to do is open with Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Praise God, praise God. And when you get there, say amen, and I'll know you have arrived. Ephesians 5, 14. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord, not only in the past, but in the present. For, Lord, we believe that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for the word of God. Now, Lord, wash us. Sanctify us by the truth, God. Help us, Lord, today, and we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it in Jesus' holy and precious name. Somebody says amen. amen. Praise God. I, I really do believe that there is an awakening going on. I, I preach about it. I talk about it a lot. And uh, if I think back, I probably preached there's an awakening for 50 years, but I, I really, and it, you know, God's time is not our time. His ways are not our ways. And sometimes we think that, you know, God is going to move instantly, like uh, in some cases he will. But the Bible tells us also that a thousand years is like one day to the Lord. In other words, to us, a day could be a long day, could be a short day, depending on how busy you are. If you don't busy yourself, that day is going to drag <coughs> on and drag on. And it's going to seem like eternity for that one day to pass by. But if you're busy and you're, you know, you're active, you're doing things, you're consumed with uh, uh, things mentally and physically, boy, it just seems like, whoosh, boy, next thing you know, the day's over with. But really, it took the same amount of time to get to one point and to the other point. But with God, who is in absolutely no hurry to do anything, you can't hurry him. You can't say, God, hurry up and do this. You can say, God is an on-time God. But God is a God that's not in a hurry. He has no reason to hurry because he's declared the end from the beginning, so there's no reason for him to hurry. It's already been said by God. Everything Lord, that we're going to face, everything coming in the future has already been declared by God. How many believes that? Amen. You know, there's some things that God can change and will change, uh, but basically he has predestinated what we read in the Word of God. And by that, I'm talking about the foreknowledge of God, not that he predestinates somebody to go to heaven or hell, but that he, by his foreknowledge, he knows all things. He knows what's on tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next year. He knows how successful or not successful we're going to be. It depends on how you apply your life to the Word of God and what His truth is. But a day, uh, uh, one day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And in other words, in a one day in our time, you know, that's, that's that one day. But with God, a thousand years is just like that one day that you have. So keep that in mind when you're reading the Word of God and you're looking particularly at prophecy because it's not exactly like I think a lot of people think. But we are in an awakening, and I think this awakening is for different reasons and, different, and for different people depending on where they're at in this kingdom of God, where they're at with their lives. It could be an awakening, for instance. It could be an awakening for salvation because maybe somebody is lost. It could be an awakening them into, uh, uh, in the gifts of the Spirit, you know, because we want to uh, have more of God operating in our lives. A lot of people are stuck. By that I mean they're stuck in the past. Where we're taught, amen, by the Apostle Paul that we can excel in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm just giving these as references. We can excel in the gifts of the Spirit. Let him that, that speaks in tongues, what does it say for him to do? Pray that he may interpret, you know, and so, so we can excel in the gifts. But some people get stuck, and they're stuck there, and they're speaking in tongues. There was a preacher one time, he used to come on the radio, he had a 15-minute radio broadcast, and he spoke in tongues for 13 minutes of it. You know, it's like, you know, what kind of deal is this, you know? And the Apostle Paul is plain about that, you know? 
Uh, so, I mean, you know, people get stuck in certain areas and Pentecostalism and, you know, there's preachers that promote getting back to Pentecostalism. There's preachers that promote the political uh, uh, scene, you know, and they're really, you know, bombarding everybody about the government and about this and all that. But, uh, you know, I don't have a political motive. I think that's all wrong. I don't think God taught us or the Lord Jesus taught us either to uh, get involved in politics. I believe he taught us to proclaim the kingdom of God. That's what we're all supposed to do. Not just the preachers from the platform, but every born-again person is called to proclaim the word of God. Amen. So an awakening can mean a lot of things. It could mean that. It could mean that you're, you're awakened to the gifts of the Spirit, that, hey, I can do more for God. I, can, I don't have to be satisfied with this realm in the Spirit. I can, I can move up a little bit. I can pray that I might interpret or I might prophesy or I might do this for God. It's like learning an instrument. I'm sure Brother John didn't play like he played when, uh, today when he first started out playing. I'm sure that he was ding dong ding dong 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 dong. You know, that's, that's one. That's one of the verses I re I remember learning. Dong 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 dong. You know, yeah. You start out there, but after a while, you know, you kind of get to where you can, you know, play two or three more keys in that. Maybe kind of chord it a little bit, and yeah, right, and then you advance in that. Brother Eric, he's not, you know, he's not expertise on the bass, but now he's, he's expertise. He started out because he played guitar, but he hadn't played bass, you know, and so he wanted to you know, help us with the bass, and I'm thankful that he did. But he starts out, you know, boom, boom, boom. Now he's boom, 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 boom. You know, so, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and, I, and I remember Brandon. Brandon, when he started out with drums, he was boom, boom, boom. And then after a while, he was, you know, he advanced in playing the drums. So what you apply yourself to, and that's where you're going to be successful. So if we apply ourselves in the gifts of the Spirit and in ministering to others, amen, and, 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 and look, think about the and befriending others. Instead of being sitting on the corner somewhere and saying, I ain't got no friends, why don't you come out and be friendly towards somebody? If you come out and be friendly towards somebody, you might gain a friend. Then you can say, hey, I got a friend now. So we excel in all these different areas of our lives, different things, different things. Awakening is going to mean a lot of different things to a lot of people. But an awakening to God is awakening us to righteousness. It's awakening us to realization of who we are in Christ, what's before us, and how we're going to be the overcomers that God has called us to be. And, you know, and those, that kind of an awakening is more for a mature Christian. But people that are uh, uh, tired of just sitting in, the, in, a, in a congregation. People that's tired of just seeing the same old, same old, same old. People that's looking for a change in the spirit, a change in the, the dynamics of church, the change in dynamics of ministry. And people that's looking for a change, they want to advance. They want to go a step beyond where they're at right now. They want to go a little higher, amen, so to speak. So, so in, in that respect, amen, that, that's kind of where I am. I, I want to go on to what some call the next level, wherever that's at, amen. I want to do more for Jesus. I want to see more people saved. I want to see people uh, truly delivered. I want to see people healed and set free by the power of God. I mean, not just for the show or that we have a lot of people, but I just want to see it for their sake and for the sake of the gospel, amen, because Jesus is looking for a people that will receive him, that will love him that will submit to him and be the kind of people that he's called us to be so amen but an awakening also in, in in one thing is a realization and i think this is very important that we are all in a process somebody say a process we're all every one of i'm still after over 50 years of serving the lord i'm still in a process I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling my way about. I'm still looking through a, a glass darkly. I, I, I'm coming to a realization. I don't know what I thought I, I did know. I mean, because I've, I've come to a realization of deeper truths, amen, that, uh, that I didn't realize, you know, 40, 50 years ago. Because we, we grow in His grace. We grow in the Lord. And uh, so we're in a process, amen. We come into this thing. You could look at it this way, and this is where it's described in the Bible. We come into these things as babies in Christ, just little babies, amen. 
And we're still, and some are still talking baby talk. That's where the tongues come in, you know. And, and, they, and they can't get off the, the baby. How, what, would, what would you think was happening if you had a child, and as that child grows old from the time it's born, amen, and then, you know, when it's, uh, when it's 15 years old, uh, it, 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 it talks to you in baby talk. Mommy, Daddy, <laughs> I like to have my uh, new car. You know, I'd like to have me a uh, one of the big trucks, and I can ride, and I can do this. You know, what would you think about that kid? I mean, that kid has lost something a long way. You know, he he's still talking baby talk, and that's the way a lot of Christians are. They're still talking baby talk. You know, Paul said in one place, he said, "I would have given you meat, but I couldn't do it." Because you have envy and strive among you. So I just had to give you milk. I just had to give you something, amen, to kind of nourish you along because you're not ready for the, for the meat of the Word of God. You're not ready for the depth of the Word. You're not ready for, you know, what, uh, what God really wants to bring into your life, amen. So sometimes it's an awakening that, hey, I can be more. I can have more. I can receive more. I can do more for God. I can be more blessed than I am now if I quit limiting God in my life. Amen. Listen, every vessel is broken. Not long ago, I preached a little bit about uh, the broken vessels, how that, you know, we're all broken vessels. We've all had shattering things happen in our lives that, you know, that we couldn't, we couldn't fix. We can't put it back together. Amen. The, 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 the potter that was making us and forming us and, 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 and helping us, amen, and we become not complacent to his funding or his, the way he's operating in our lives, and, and, and we're not being led by the Lord to let him do what he wants to do with us, and we make mistakes, and we're, we're all broken. We've all had experiences, amen, of brokenness in our lives, and sometimes condemnation comes because of that brokenness, and we, we can't really press on, and we can't really go, amen, where, where we want to go with the Lord because we keep looking back and we don't look forward amen we we hear a message or we hear a voice or we read a scripture and uh, have the great men of God or the women of God in the Bible and, and we admire them amen but we forget that amen they were just human beings just like you and I are there was no difference they were broken vessels they had problems in their lives they struggled with a lot of things in their own lives amen but yet they pressed on praise God and were able to be the overcomers that God had called them to do and that's what we uh, as an awakening now we've got to awaken that we are all in this process of growing in God's grace. Amen. Every one of us, we're all there. Amen. The big, the little, the small, the great, the ugly, and the pretty. <laughs> we're all in the same process, amen, of allowing, hopefully you're allowing God to operate in your life. So that's an awakening we need to understand. That's why we should never judge one another, amen, where we're at with God. We should never judge a person that that person failed or that person made a mistake or that person sinned or, or that person did this or that person did that and shut him out and shut her out, shut this one out, shut that one out. Because listen, they, they may have been in that position, but if they've asked God to forgive them and God has forgiven them, let's not between them and God ain't got nothing to do with you. Amen. Can you say Amen. So we need to understand that person's in a process. Just like I'm in a process, you're in a process. And there's not a person on the sound of my voice, amen, that can say, amen, I've never sinned and I've never made a mistake, amen. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, amen. But let me tell you this, amen, there is a step beyond the condemnation. Condemnation will keep you back in the past, amen. And we need an awakening, amen, that if God has forgiven you, it is forgiven and it is forgotten. It's over with. Quit reminding the Lord, amen, of what you did in the past and press on into the now. Somebody say now. We need to live in the now and keep our focus on tomorrow. <clears throat> and we should never look back unless it's to examine mistakes that we've made that we be sure not to do them again. Can you say amen? amen. And the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. You don't have to go. There's just one verse. It says, but <clears throat> we all with open face Beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, that's something you don't really realize day by day. Amen. You don't really realize, amen, 
You know, in all of these years, you know, that process of time, amen, from the time I was born to where I'm at today, amen, that whole process, amen, that process, that is a long process. And I don't think there's a time in that process of my life that I really realize I'm in a process and tomorrow I'm going to be more into the image of the Lord and tomorrow I'm going to be closer to the Lord tomorrow than I was t uh, today. I never realized, I mean, I never thought so much about that, but when I read that scripture, I realize that the Lord is working in every single solitary one of us. It's a slow process. Somebody say slow. It's a slow process, amen. But it's a process, amen, that we have got to endure when we submit ourselves to God and give ourselves to Him and determine that we're going to serve the Lord. That process begins and changes us, amen, from a little baby in Christ, amen, to mature uh, uh, men and women of God, amen, that's able to eat strong meat, able to endure, amen, hardships, able to fight the good fight of faith, amen. You can't put a baby in the front lines uh, and put armor on him and Expect that baby to survive. That baby is going to be killed. Amen. That's why as parents, amen, not only in the parents in the home is to protect their children from the evil one and from the from the wolves out here in the world, but it's also the job of the men of God to be watchmen on the walls, amen, and protect the flock that God has entrusted him with, amen, because, amen, the babes in Christ can't fight this warfare. But men and women that have served the Lord for a year, and years, amen, ought to have enough boldness and enough spiritual insight and enough spiritual power, amen, to be able to discern, amen, what's going on in the body and stand up for them, amen, protect them, amen, the best way they can, amen, through prayer and through the word of God, amen, and through comfort, amen, be the man that they're supposed to be, be that watchman on the wall and protect those children, amen. amen. So, amen. So, an awakening could be a baby, man, awakening that he's going to grow up. But it also could be an awakening to the man of God or the women of God, amen, that's been given responsibility to take that position, amen, that they've been placed into by the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and work at it, amen, and do something. Paul said in one place, he said, I labored more than them all, amen. And he was talking about Peter, James, and John. He was talking about the apostles, amen, that were there also. He said, I worked harder. I labored more. What was it about Paul? Paul had a determination to serve God, no matter if you liked him. If you didn't like him, he could care less, amen, because he was serving the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and that's all that meant anything to him, amen. So sometimes we need to awaken, amen, that we're working for Jesus, amen. We're working for the Lord, amen. He's the one that called us. He's the one anointed us. Amen. He's the one that baptized us with the Spirit of God. Amen. Now John said, amen, speaking of Jesus, there's one that's coming after I that's mightier than I. He said, I see indeed baptized with water, but there's one coming after me that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. So, amen. We need an awakening to the Holy Ghost and fire. We need an awakening, amen, to the promise that God has given to us in the Word of God. Yes, that there is an awakening, but that awakening is meant, it's, 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 it's interpreted differently by different ones, amen, depending on where you're at with the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. But now all of us, according to this word, but we all, all of us, with open face beholding in a glass the glory of the Lord. And they used to, I preach about that a lot because James is talking about that glass, amen, that we look into. It's the Word of God. Amen. And when we look into the Word of God, we see in the Word of God what God has predestinated us to become because He has predestinated us, amen, amen, to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. Can you say amen? So that's what God has chosen us to be like. He's chosen me to be like Jesus. He's chosen you to be like Jesus, amen. He didn't just say, well, the preachers are going to be like Jesus and everybody else is going to be like who knows what. No, we're all, amen, going to be like Jesus, praise the Lord. 
Lord. And I'll tell you what, when I study about Jesus and I study about the words that he preached uh, and I study about his actions, uh, I study about his holy living, his godly living, uh, I study about what he says, amen, and how, amen, that, that he don't have no fear of man, amen, and how he could call legions of angels if he wanted to. Every time I read about Jesus, I, I say, I really like this guy. I really like this Jesus, amen. And then I read in the word of God where we're predestinated to be in his image. Man, I'm telling you what, I get excited about that, amen, to be like the Lord, praise God. Not all the way over in, in La La Land somewhere, but right here on planet Earth. That is an awakening there that we need to understand more fully that we're going to be like him. All of us are going to be like him. Well, the scripture says it, but we all, somebody say we all, <laughs> with open face in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed. How do we change? As we look into that glass, as we look at, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. But we all with open face, behold, it means to look at, looking in a glass. When I look in this glass, amen, what happens to me? I'm changed in the same image. What glass do I need to look in? The Word of God. Hallelujah. When I look into this Word, amen, I see the possibility. I see the predestination. I see the will of God. I see the plan of God. Amen. Not only of my salvation being saved, amen, and going to heaven, amen, but I can be like the Lord. And it says as I behold in the glass, uh, as long as I got my eyes on the glass, uh, as long as my vision is centered uh, toward the Word of God, uh, as as long as I'm beholding the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, as long as I'm looking into God's Word, amen, as long as I'm concentrating, I'm focused, I'm focused in the Word. I don't care what the newspaper says. I don't care what CNN says. I don't care what this one says. I don't care what that one says. I'm focused on the glass. I'm being changed from glory to glory in that same image, praise the Lord. See, that's being focused on the Word. We don't realize how important the Word of God is. We thank God that we're saved by it. Thank the Lord. But that's most Christians, that's as far as it goes. That's as far as it goes. So there is an awakening to the meat of God's Word. There is an awakening to our realm of the Spirit that I would venture to say 99% of Christians sitting in churches have no clue about it at all. I would venture to say 99% of ever, never, 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 ever heard a message on really being like the Lord in that scripture right there. I just don't believe it because I never hear anybody preaching it. And that's a shame that the people are not receiving that image, that, that well, how shall I say it, that understanding that they can press on. They can excel, not only in the gifts of the Spirit, but they can excel in God. So we need an awakening. I think all of us know, realize that we need an awakening that things are going to change. We can yield to that change or we can resist that change. The more you yield to that change that God is working in your life by giving yourself to the Word. Giving yourself to the Word. You know, Ephesians and Colossians and, you know, th those scriptures, th those little short things that Paul wrote, I'm telling you what, you ought to read them. You ought to read them every day. And just digest it. Just digest it. Amen. You know, some, people, some people are going to the Old Testament and they pick out all the gloom, doom, despair, and agony scriptures they can find in the Old Testament. And they never look into the new. Well, we got a new, a new covenant, praise God. We're not under the old covenant. We're under a new covenant. And in that new covenant is so many discoveries of what God wants us to become. And God wants us to be that way. You know, in, in my favorite scripture we preached for years there, and I've quoted here dozens and dozens and dozens of times, Romans 12 and 1 and 2. You know, how, how that, what that, that scripture is saying is it, just astounding to me. And every time I read it or every time I meditate about it, every time I think about it, every time I preach, I say, my God, how, what, why can't we get a hold of this? Yeah. And it's now, now I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and a simple unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind, and you, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2. And th th those two sets of scriptures to me says it all. And it's, and it's saying, look, this is what you need to do. Give yourself to God. Tra you can transform yourself. It's a metamorphosis, it's a change entirely. Amen. I think I've encouraged people to put that on the refrigerator door. But don't just put the verses, I mean the scripture, put all the verses there. Because you probably won't go, you see it, but you won't go read it. We can transform ourselves. That is an awakening every born-again Christian needs to hear. They don't need to skim over that. They need to get back and address that. I beseech you therefore, brethren. By the mercies of God. It's God's mercy you're here. It's God's mercy you're saved. It's God's mercy you're sitting in the church pew where you're at today. It's God's mercy. Yeah. And then he talks about giving yourself to God. Giving me your body, your mind, your spirit, your soul. Giving yourself to God. That you present your body as a living sacrifice. Holy. A supplement to God which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. How much, how much time do we spend in the world, the people spend in the world? I'm talking about Christians. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then we read here, amen, this thing about this glass, this word, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed. By that same scripture, we could also say that if we don't look into the glass, that it's able to help us to be transformed. If we don't look into the glass, what's going to happen? This is not going to come to pass in our lives. So what I'm saying this morning is we need an awakening in all kinds of different areas, depending on where we're at with the Lord. Amen. 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 You know, you look at me with a much shorter lifespan ahead of me than what's behind me. You cannot, you cannot, you will, you could never understand what's going on in this break. Never. You could never understand. If my, my, if my thoughts was totally open to y'all, you'd say, oh, my God. <laughs> Amen. You'd think, man, it'd blow you away. The thoughts that come into this brain are mine. But I'm back to the Word. I, I, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've always got to come back to the Word of God. No matter what's working in my mind about the future, no matter what's working in my mind about the church here and, uh, and, and the ministry and, and everything and all what's going on, uh, uh, the store, the business, uh, uh, work and all that, I, I always got, I, I got to get back to the Word. Because in the Word is where the glass is at, amen. There's, it's the glass, it's the image, amen, that, that God wants me to be. It's in the Word of God. So if I focus in the Word, I'm going to be okay. Somebody say okay if I focus in the Word. If I, if I keep studying the Word of God, keep reading the Word of God, I'm eventually going to be conformed to Jesus' image. I'm going to read that verse of Scripture. It's Romans 8 and 28. Everybody loves that verse of Scripture. Let's turn to it right quick and look at it. Romans 8 and 28. Everybody loves Romans 8 and 28. Everybody loves it. Romans 8 and 28. You're there. All right. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called the according to his purpose. Well, what is his purpose? It's the next verse. It's the next verse. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate, predetermine, foreknowledge of God. He predetermined something for them, him, for whom he did foreknow you. Foreknow means to know beforehand. So there is a people he knew beforehand. So who is that, Brother Hayes? Every one of you. <laughs> every, every person that's ever been born. He knows all things. It's impossible for him to be God and not know all things. For God does know all things. Anyway, 
For whom he did not foreknow, he also did predestinate to do what? To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So notice, everything's going to work to my good. Everything's going to work to your good. And there's a reason that it's going to work to my good. Not just because God loves me. He loves us all. He loves everybody. For God so loved the world that he told you not to love. So God, we know God is love. But there's something else about God is that he purposed in us, every one of us. He has a plan for us. And it's not so much a plan to make you rich in the world and to get you a new Cadillac. Come on. But it is a plan for you to grow into the image of the Son of God. That's an awakening for many. For those that he predestinated, he called them. Then he called, he, he justified them. And then he justified, he glorifies. So who's doing this work? Is it you? Only you have to do, only thing you have to do is give yourself to God. He is the one that's doing this work. In other words, what shall we say to these? There's nothing you can say about this. If God be for you, who can be against you? There's nothing you can say about those scriptures. That's what he's saying. There's nothing you can say about this. God is God, and he's working in your life, and everything's going to work to your good. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be good. We're going to have trials. We're going to have trouble. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to be in pressure, and we're going to, you know, there's a lot of things that may happen to all of us, collectively and individually. But when those things come to you, you go back to this scripture, not just that scripture, read all of them, what he's talking about. Not just that everything is going to be okay, it's going to work to your good, but why is it working to your, because God's working in your life, and he's bringing you into a realm with him, a place in God with him that you've never been there before. That's what God's doing. See, there is, there is an experience that I have not yet experienced. And I'm not just ta I'm not talking about the other world. I'm talking about in this life with God. There is an experience that I have yet to experience with God. Amen. There is an experience coming for each one of us if you will yield yourself to God, keep yourself into the Word of God that you've not yet experienced. But it's a work of God. It's not a work of the flesh. It's not something you do, but just give yourself to the Lord. Transform yourself how? By renewing your mind, by thinking differently. It didn't say transform yourself by working harder, transform yourself by giving more, transform yourself by doing more, transform yourself by paying more attention. No, that's not what he's talking about. Transform yourself by the renewing of your mind. To renew is to restore. To renew is to uh, renovate. To renew is to change over. It's to make it something different, make it newer. Renovate, amen. Your mind, the way, by the way you think. You transform yourself by thinking differently. Then that gets back to that scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We need this kind of an awakening. Because it will help us in every area, every aspect of your life. When you give yourself to this word, just give yourself to it. Just yield to it. Lord, I'm going to change the way I've been thinking. I've been thinking, wasn't nothing going to work out for me? I've been thinking, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it. I, I'm fearful of what's coming up on this earth. I, I'm scared, amen, of what's going to happen tomorrow. And I'm worried about the government. I'm worried about the, who's going to be the president. I'm worried about inflation. I'm, I'm worried about the economy. I'm worried about the stock market. You see what I'm saying? That's all of the world. What are you worried about what the world's doing? You might reply to me, it's going to affect me. Yes, it's going to affect It will not affect you if you keep yourself in the Word. Back in 08, I think it was, uh, when, when, you know, the stock market crashed and, you know, and the gas went up to 5 or $6 a gallon. Has everybody forgot that? 
But you know what? I just kept on keeping on, keeping on. Just because now we kept traveling, just like we always did. I didn't care if it's, I, I, you know, my, my, my mindset was this. I don't care if it's $10 a gallon, we're going. If I can get up the ten dollars or get the credit card up, to, if I don't run out of, I don't run out of my, my, you know, what do you call it? I said, we're going to go. We're not going to quit. We're not going to stop. No. You've got to have that attitude. You're not going to give up. You're not going to stop. You're going to keep going. You're going to keep on. Keep it on with the Lord, because yes. He promised us, Amen, that we're being changed, Amen, from glory to glory. Praise God. He gave us a promise. I predestinated you. I've chosen you, I, I, and I called you, and I'm going to justify you, and then I'm going to glorify you. My God, we're we're in a race here, Amen. A to believe the word of God. We need this awakening. The world needs awakening to salvation and deliver. We need an awakening to the promise of God that we find in the word of God. It'll transform. It, it will absolutely revolutionize your life if you just take the word for what the word says and don't doubt it. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Praise God. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, and he said, And be found in him, speaking of Christ, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Wait a minute, what does this say? That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. That I may know him. This is Paul. Yes. And be conformed, see. What was it about Paul? What was he talking about? He was talking about this same thing I'm speaking of. To know him, to have that intimate understanding of him, to to really Paul knew the Lord. Now Paul, the Lord appeared to Paul. I mean, if they if, they, if nobody ever knew the Lord, it was it was Paul that knew the Lord. He knew the Lord, but he wanted more. He realized as much as he had done, the gifts of the Spirit, all the gifts of the Spirit operating in his life. He cast out devils. The sick were healed. The dead were raised. Demons were cast out. I mean, this man wrote most of the New Testament, the, the epistles. But yet he said, oh, that I may know the Lord. Do you understand? He knew something that most Christians don't know. You can excel. I'm getting back to you can excel. You don't have to stay on the same level in Christ. Just as like you don't have to stay the same level on your job for what you're doing out here. You can be a master at what you do, but you can't do it being lazy. You can't do it by cheating. No. You can't do it by getting by. You've got to do it with hard work. You've got to apply yourself, and you've got to determine yourself, I'm going to be the best. I think Eric was telling me just recently, yeah, that he's developing himself into the best towel man there he is. <laughs> and he... There's no doubt in my mind he can do it. You just got to have a made-up mind, and you're willing to work, and you're going to work hard. There's no doubt in my mind you will accomplish what you set, your, set yourself to do. Well, I tell you what, let's, let's make up our mind that we're going to accomplish what God has predestinated in our lives. We're going to walk in his footsteps. Amen. We're going to walk in his consecration, his dedication, and his life. Praise God. We're going, to, we're going to be doers of the word of God and not hearers just deceiving ourselves. We're going to take that work, a word of God as a mirror, a mirror in what God has predestined us for us to become. We've got to make up my mind. We're going to be master Christians. Master Christians. A master of the trade of Christianity. I'd love to be a master preacher. I, I, I see some preachers, I, I don't like to watch preachers because they mess me up, so I I, I really, but sometimes I'll watch some, Sister Glenda send me different ones, and I'll listen to some of them. Some of them are masterful. Man, I'm talking about masterful, the way they deliver the Word of God. Yes. You know, 
But I want to be masterful in the power of the Holy Ghost. Masterful in the gifts. Of, in other words, I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about getting rid of my ain'ts and my little phrases that, you know, that people laugh about. They realize I'm from the country sometimes because of the way I talk. I'm not talking about changing my vocabulary. I'm talking about stepping into an anointing that I have not yet experienced. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking about stepping into an anointing, amen, that, that like Jesus had. Listen, do, do you realize the greatest message Jesus preached, he sat down? He didn't run all over the church house. He sat down. He just sat down. And can you imagine enough anointing and power where 5,000 people would just sit there for three days and didn't even move, <laughs> didn't eat a thing. They were transfixed on the power that this man spoke with. No man ever spoke like Jesus spoke. You understand what I'm saying? What was it about you? It was that anointing. And the Word of God says he's predestinating us to be conformed to his image. Does this make any sense to y'all? So when you hear that word, uh, 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 awakening, you know, how is it affecting you, say? Say, when I see somebody say, there's an awakening in Timbuktu, and uh, you, you get the images, and everybody's hollering up, you know, and, and I'm thinking, I say, well, thank God. If it's for the Lord, praise the Lord. The people are being saved, and I thank God for that. But I realize that I need an awakening. I don't need to see that there is an awakening over there. I need to see an awakening right here in my heart, in my life. And that's what I want you to start doing, looking for that awakening in you, that realization, that just waking up, my God, I, I've wasted so many years, but now I'm going to press on. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. God bless you.